Mario has been the mascot for Nintendo since the release of Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985. In fact, the franchise is so popular that there's a good chance if you walk up to someone and just say the words, It's a me! They'll respond with, Mario! Super Mario is just good, clean fun. Or is it? Well, it turns out that Mario does indeed have a dark side. That is why we've compiled a list of 10 facts about Super Mario too inappropriate for kids. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all our awesome videos and click that bell to become part of our notification squad. Number 10. Mario once went to battle with monsters from hell. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Super Mario, along with Kirby and Link from The Legend of Zelda, once went to battle against the worst the underworld had to offer in a comic strip featured in German magazine Club Nintendo. If this was a video game, it would be a battle of the ages and a guaranteed moneymaker. Simply called Super Mario in the Night of Horror, the plot of the comic is this. Mario, along with Kirby and Link, must defend their Brooklyn skyscraper and Princess Peach from Abagor, who is a demon, and his evil forces, which include such classic horror characters as Leatherface and Chucky. Why is it set in Brooklyn? Who knows? Why is this Abagor character the main villain? Beats me. All we know is that there is one hell of a star-studded cast in this comic strip. Using Van Helsing's weapons and drinking red serum, the Nintendo heroes are able to drive the evil back to where it belongs. Good always triumphs over evil in the end. Remarkably, this story is actually part one of a two-part arc, just in case in case you really need that Mario horror itch scratched. This comic strip may be inappropriate for kids, but it shows just how good fan-created content can truly be. Number 9. Mario's mushrooms have psychedelic properties. One mushroom makes you larger, and one mushroom makes you small. Many people don't know that those happy-go-lucky red and white mushrooms actually have a real-life counterpart. No, they're not just Toad's headpiece. They're actually based on the Amanita muscaria, otherwise known as the fly agaric or fly Amanita mushroom known for its psychoactive effects. They're not actually magic, but they may feel like it. Among these psychoactive effects, consuming the Amanita muscaria can make one imagine objects as larger or smaller than they actually are, which has led to many people walking straight into others or trying to jump over things much taller than them. It also begs the question, is Mario actually getting bigger? Or is he just an addict who's confusing his brain? It would certainly clarify why he's seeing flying turtles and little squatty brown guys all trying to kill him. It would also explain how he suddenly turns into a towering beast. Maybe Mario just feels like a beast when he takes a mushroom and stomps on everything to assert his authority. Well, I guess Mario never saw those important PSAs or else, believe me, he would have stayed away from those psychedelic mushrooms. Number 8. The real Super Mario 2 is way too hard for you, kid. Ever wonder why Super Mario Bros. 2 feels so different from the original Super Mario? It's not that it's a bad game, not in the slightest. It's just that it's weird to go from jumping on every single enemy's head to throwing vegetables at them. That's because Super Mario Bros. 2 is actually a remake of a different Japanese game called Doki Doki Panic, with the game's characters subbed out for Mario characters. That turned out to be a very wise decision in the end. The actual second installment in the Super Mario franchise was never actually actually released in the US after testers played the game and determined it was too difficult for puny American gamers. The real Super Mario Bros. 2 would make its way across the sea years later under the moniker of the Lost Levels in Super Mario All-Stars. Sorry kid, but it's for your own good. The actual Mario 2 would have just made you cry because these levels are no joke. One is more difficult than the next, and it takes a really great Mario player to get through these. Sorry kid, maybe after a few hundred hours of practice you'll be able to take these levels on. Number 7. Mario is not aging well. According to Super Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto, Super Mario is somewhere in the area of 24 to 25 years old. That's right, you heard that correctly. Super Mario, a short, round, mustachioed man who realistically looks like he's probably a middle-aged plumber, is in his mid-twenties. You're probably thinking to yourself, what in the world is going on here? Well, it turns out there are a few possible explanations. First, Mario's repeated trips to the Mushroom Kingdom, a different dimension than the one he from are somehow taking a toll on his brain, metabolism, and physical appearance. That one seems really far-fetched. Another is that Mario's rampant use of psychedelic mushrooms, as we've already seen on this list, is catching up to him. So Mario might be the love child of Keith Richards and Benjamin Button or something. The actual truth is that Miyamoto is saying that Mario was born the day his first video game came out. But that raises the next question. Who is Baby Mario then? Mario was already fully grown at birth, so it makes no sense that Baby Mario 
show even exists. We want answers, Nintendo. Also, if you're a kid watching this, stop! We thought we made it clear that this was not for you. Number 6. The entire Super Mario Bros. movie. Okay, we've been having good fun up until this point, right? Good, good. Listen, it's time to get serious here. This part of the list is not for children. Because the Super Mario Bros. movie is not for children. Interestingly enough, it's actually not for adults either. Or anyone for that matter. If you haven't seen the Super Mario Bros. movie, let us start by saying you don't ever need to. Not ever. Just look up a few images from the film and you'll be more than set. Seriously, it might possibly be one of the worst movies ever created. The movie had plenty of highlights, or should we say lowlights? First of all, King Koopa is a real person. Not the fire-breathing dragon turtle we all know and love, but a human. Also, a large part of the film's action takes place in a city called Dino Hatton. The film was a disaster. It flopped at the box office and with critics. Quite frankly, this movie would terrify most young children and absolutely ruin the video game franchise they grew up adoring. It makes older kids cry too, but for very different reasons. The most important one being that they wasted 10 bucks to see whatever that was. Number 5. Mario captured Donkey Kong with a whip and threw him into a cage. So Mario and Donkey Kong didn't exactly get along in the first Donkey Kong game. Donkey Kong captured his girl Pauline, who was Mario's first love interest before Princess Peach. Mario had to climb a bunch of ladders to get her back, and let's just say they didn't end on good terms. But what does Mario do in response? He captures Donkey Kong from the wild, locks him in a cage, and then sends out his bullwhipped animal minions to stop DK's son, Donkey Kong Jr., from saving his father. I don't even know where to possibly begin with this. Mario sometimes just decides to go mental, and we feel sorry for DK in this situation. Obviously, there's an element of animal cruelty here, but it's exacerbated by the fact that DK and his son are self-aware. Junior's watching his father dangled in front of his face before Mario sweeps him away to the next stage. We should also let PETA know about this whole thing. It's kind of uncomfortable. Mario must be some kind of sadist if he'd be willing to sink to the lowest of lows to make a statement. Whatever the case may be, Mario is one sick puppy. Number 4. Mario wants Princess Peach to be captured. Think about it. In pretty much every Mario game, Princess Peach gets kidnapped. It's the same thing every time. Bowser shows up, kidnaps the princess, and Mario has to get her back. It's a simple case of rinse and repeat. You'd think that the princess of the Mushroom Kingdom would improve the defenses of her castle to prevent another kidnapping, but I guess that's too much to ask for. Anyway, if Mario was really serious about saving the princess, maybe he would consider actually doing something to protect her after he rescues her, such as telling her to improve her defenses. She's obviously not able to take care of herself since the only time she doesn't get kidnapped is when she's playing tennis or golf. So maybe having some kind of security detail might not be a bad idea. I mean, come on, this woman is royalty, right? And yet she's just sort of left to do her own thing while a gigantic maniac dinosaur stalker is still after her? Maybe Peach just has Stockholm Syndrome and enjoys getting kidnapped. The jig is up, Mario. I wouldn't be surprised if this dude was in cahoots with Bowser the whole time. That sneaky little plumber. Number 3. The Koopa got their names from some strange places. If you've ever wondered why the Koopalings are named what they are, there's actually, for the most part, some pretty specific logic behind each name. The majority of the names are odd, but relatively tame. Nothing comes across as incredibly weird with Larry, Roy, Wendy, and Ludwig, but the three other Koopalings in particular stick out. Iggy Koopa, named for rock star Iggy Pop, Morton Koopa Jr., named for chain-smoking and aggressive TV host Morton Downey Jr., and Lemmy Koopa, named after Lemmy Kilmister from metal band Motorhead. That means two of the adorable Koopalings are named for rock musicians known for their heavy sound and love of all things smokable, and a third is named for a TV host known for screaming at his guests and going through a whole pack of smokes per episode. Nintendo really came up with some great names for these three bad boys. Good thing there was no internet when Super Mario Bros. 3 came out, or a lot of kids might have found some interesting results when they tried to Google the game's tiny, lovable bosses. While it would be cool to see some kids whistling Motorhead songs, it didn't end up happening. Number 2. Bowser and Peach like the sauce. Who got the hooch? Bowser and Peach, apparently. In the Japanese version of Super Mario Kart, both Bowser and Peach celebrate a first place victory by picking up a bottle of what is unquestionably champagne and downing it in celebration. In the American version, Bowser just picks up the bottle and shakes it around, which seems like an odd choice if he ever plans to drink it. He doesn't even pop the cork or anything, so it definitely feels like something's missing. Luckily, in the Japanese version, he goes all in by popping the cork and drinking the whole bottle like it's water. The same 
goes for Peach in the Japanese version. The pink princess pops the cork and chugs till her face turns red. In Japan, their video games don't have any standards when it comes to alcohol consumption. But in America, if video game characters drink alcohol, it has to be rated M for mature. Obviously, Nintendo didn't want to get forced into getting an ESRB rating of mature for their friendly Mario Kart game, so they scrapped it for the American version. Number 1. Mario Might Be a Mass Murderer According to the Super Mario Bros. manual, there was once a very dark period in the history of the Mushroom Kingdom that may surprise you. One day, the kingdom of the peaceful Mushroom people was invaded by the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic. The quiet, peace-loving Mushroom people were turned into mere stones, bricks, and even field horsehair plants, and the Mushroom Kingdom fell into ruin. Hang on a second. Wait a minute. Back up. What was that last part? They were all turned into stones and bricks? Aren't those exactly what you spend the entire game destroying? By that logic, the Koopas use their Medusa powers to turn people into bricks and with every brick you smash, you are in fact taking the life of an innocent citizen of the Mushroom Kingdom. That will make you think twice before you hit that brick. You'll never be able to look at Mario the same way again, but hopefully your kids still can because you kept them far, far away from this video. Well, at least we hope you did. When your kids are old enough, take it out, sit them down, and tell them the true story of the Super Mario. Oh, brother. It's safe to say that Mario isn't the perfect hero we all thought he was. Well, we all have skeletons in our closets after all. Let us know of any other Super Mario facts that are too inappropriate for kids in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with our awesome playlist. Thanks for watching.